This is a follow on video um, about the ThinkPad Yoga 11e. This is the same laptop feature in all the previous videos. Um, it originally came with Windows 8, which was then upgraded to 8.1, and now it's been upgraded to Windows 10. So we're going to look at how that affects it, if there are any issues, whether you need to do anything, um, whether there were any problems, and if there were, how to fix them. So, first thing is, let's turn it on. Open it up, press the power button, and it goes, and we can check the boot time. Uh, remember, this one's got an SSD in it, so it should be pretty quick, and it was pretty quick with Windows 8 and Windows 8.1. Um, and there it is. So it, it loads pretty much the same speed as it would do with Windows 8.1. It's not any really faster or slower particularly. Um, it, it's still pretty quick. I'm not going to quibble over a few seconds. I haven't bothered timing it. But as you can see, there's the data stop and we're all in business. And it's, um, yeah, it, it, it boots perfectly well. Um, that's a cold boot. That's not a, a, um, a hibernation. I don't particularly like hibernation and sleep modes and things like that. Although I know that Windows 10 relies on sort of a pseudo hibernation for its fast boot feature. Um, with the SSD, this boots quick anyway, so you're not going to notice any significant decrease or increase in boot times. Not that that's a particular feature that I'm going to dwell on. So now it's booted. Were there any issues with the upgrade well we'll cut straight to one of the most important things that you're going to want to do and that is the SATA controller this particular one was upgraded from the factory installation I reset it back to its factory installation of Windows 8 then I updated Windows 8 and put Windows 8.1 on and I went through all the updates for that and then I manually ran the Windows 10 upgrade. I didn't wait for it to do things with the GWX app. I deliberately went to the uh, Windows 10 ISO download site, downloaded the tool, said, I want to upgrade this machine, and off it went. The main issue is the SATA controller that it installs. Remember, this machine was updated straight from the factory reset. I hadn't made any tweaks to it, any fiddles. I haven't, you know, modified it in any way. Um, and I noticed that Windows 10 would stutter and freeze and stall occasionally. It wasn't particularly predictable, except that it always did it. So while you were doing something, it was sort of lock and then carry on, lock and then carry on. This I narrowed down to the SATA controller, so if you upgrade it from the default Windows 10 installation, it installs uh, an Intel controller. I would change that to the default one um, to stop the stuttering. So the way you do that is you go into device manager, look at IDE, ATA, Atapi controllers, it'll say Intel, say update driver, browse, let me pick, choose standard, click next, click OK, click restart. And once I've done that, a lot of the freezing, the stuttering, which I thought initially with the trackpad, went away. So that's quite, that if, if you get anything from this video, um, that, that'll be it. <laughs> that's the most important thing I can possibly mention. Everything else is reasonably plain, plain sailing. I did remove quite a lot of the um, uh, Lenovo stuff, which was generally a bit rubbish. Um, I think the solution center went I think the companion app went that mainly because they tended to install or try and install various updates and that tended to break things um, plus I, if it's not broken there's no real reason to update it anyway so unless you can think of a particular specific reason to update something 
like it fix, you know, the update fixes the problem, then I wouldn't bother updating anyway. Um, mainly because a lot of the updates from the Lenovo thing did actually break the 11E um, and other Lenovo computers as well. They're far too fussy about it. Um, so, any other differences? Well, not really. It actually works quite well. The touch, all the touch features work. Uh, it connects to the internet correctly. It, uh, if you, well, what's true about Windows 10 generally is if you do a lot of things on the desktop, so if you click an icon on the desktop to run things or go to websites or check your email, then you're not going to notice any difference between Windows 10 and the previous version of Windows, assuming that you like your desktop and not the tiles. Windows 10 has got the tiles and you can flip between them because they're part of the start menu and the start menu is different, but if you do desktop stuff then there's going to be no difference at all. Um, performance wise, the 11E, this particular model of the 11E is quite uh, low powered compared to other computers. The newer version of the 11E has got a very nice processor in it that's, that's significantly faster, but this is the original version. It still is absolutely fine, it doesn't um, slow down or chug for normal office tasks, I mean, you're not going to be playing games on it apart from you know the standard sort of browser based games, I think Minecraft should probably work quite well. But as a general rule, you're not buying this to play games on anyway, and you're not buying this as a performance thing, you're buying it for the fact that it's rugged and portable, or you were given it you know, at school. So Windows 10 is going to make very little difference in that respect. Um, there aren't any particular features of Windows 10 that it benefits from. Um, you've got the Edge browser, if you do use Chrome, doesn't, you're not going to use that anyway, so it doesn't matter. So essentially upgrading will make very little difference to you if you use the desktop and if you use a browser like Chrome. Um, I don't particularly have any strong opinions about what browser people should use. I quite like Edge, I quite like Chrome, I quite like Firefox. I tend to have two browsers installed anyway. Um, Edge has got a few issues, obviously, because it's got a few teething problems, um, but that's neither here nor there. Um, so as a machine, with Windows 10 on it, it actually works quite well. So let's just check that. With the change in SATA driver, everything is a little bit quicker, because it doesn't stutter. So if you've put Windows 10 on your machine, and you're thinking, oh, why did I bother, this is pretty horrible that's the reason. Everything else should be completely fine. As you can see I'm doing things and it's all working correctly. If I look at programs and features I'll tell you precisely what I've got installed and then you can obviously compare that to yours and remove those apps and programs before you run the update. So in terms of Lenovo stuff I've got the um, Lenovo Auto Scroll Utility although I don't know why I've got that, I'll probably get rid of that. Lenovo battery gauge, Lenovo experience improvement. I think that's just to help Lenovo rather than um, the user. Uh, On-screen display, peer connect, power management driver, quick control, quick optimizer, Lenovo system interface foundation, which I think is rather important for functions like the touchscreen and things. Um, Lenovo USB graphics, Lenovo USB 3 to DVI, VGA adapter, various Vision C++ things, uh, synaptics pointing, ThinkPad settings dependency, I think that's very important, ThinkPad USB 3 Ethernet adapter driver, Windows driver packages, we have the following installed, we have Intel Corporation GPIO system, and that particular one is I get them in the right place. That was 10, 31st of the 10th, 2013. Windows driver package that's the IAIOI2C, which is obviously very catchy. That's the 20, 000, uh, 2013 version. The Lenovo Windows driver package is. Uh, 17th for 12, 2013 as well, that's version 1.67.04.05. There's a synaptics driver uh, for the mouse and for the system. They are 7th of the 4th, 2014. Um, 
Let's see what else we've got. Uh, Realtek card reader, Realtek Ethernet controller, Realtek high definition audio, Real 2014, the audio 2015. Uh, Touchpad's a bit clicky, but it's kind of nice to get the, the feedback. I don't know what the quick optimizer is, I've got a funny feeling that's going to go. That was 24th of the 10th, 2015 that was installed, according to, according to this particular list. Um, yeah, so everything else that's in OVO, I've got rid of. It's mainly the obvious stuff I took off. The stuff that's sort of in your face when it starts, like the little circle thing in the bottom right hand corner. I think that's the, like, there's, there's a settings thing. There's, there's uh, a desktop app and there's a, an app app. Um, a lot of the stuff they do is automatic and I think there was one thing that was useful or potentially useful, I think it was to lock the rotation of the touch screen but I didn't really see any point to that ultimately. Um, it was, so that, I think that was the app. Um, I took that off. So a lot of the Lenovo stuff that's obvious and in your face, I took off. Other than that, it's the basic plain install, Windows 10 installed perfectly happily. It didn't take too long. I think it took an hour or so, maybe an hour and a half. Uh, I've seen it take about seven hours on some machines. So it's pretty quick. Um, so all in all, apart from the issue with the SATA controller, which I found a little bit flaky, uh, it's absolutely fine, so I highly recommend you do it. Um, any comments, obviously stick them in the comments section. Um, there wasn't really much to say. This video may have dragged on a little bit. But um, the 11E works perfectly happily with Windows 10, so if you haven't put Windows 10 on, then go ahead and do it while it's free. Free for the next couple of months. Uh, and it's well, you know, everything works fine. So um, thanks so much for watching.